Antifa striking out at new conservative targets. This morning in Philly, a mob from the radical left group went after commentators Charlie Kirk and Candace Owens at a cafe. Watch this. Now, to be clear, this is what looks to be a group of mostly white Antifa protesters chanting F white supremacy at a black conservative. They're really bright, too. Joining us now with a reaction, former Secret Service agent Dan Bongino, along with radio host, former Chuck Schumer aide Chris Hahn. Okay, guys, we're going to hit this and this uh, other Antifa issue with the Marine Recruiting Station in just a moment, but. Yeah, you kind of. I, I almost think, Dan, these are, these are, these are paid performers working for the RNC because it's so damaging to the Democrats. They're always targeting conservatives, and for what? Because they're organizing a bunch of young conservative people across the country. Like, what's their beef with, right. with Candace Owens? Like, what's their beef with her? Laura, there's a bigger issue than just their beef with Candace Owens. It's not just about Candace Owens. It's about the radical left. Now, I'm, I want to be clear here. I'm not talking about all Democrats. There are a lot of Democrats that are fed up with this, too, and are trying to move away from this because they realize, like you said, that this should be an RNC ad all the time. Nobody wants to be associated with this kind of insanity. But the radical left, Laura, this is who they are. This is who they've always been. Understand, there is no emergency break on their behavior. They are godless people who believe in the brutal force of the state. And when they lose state power, which they have, their only outlet is violence. This does not apply to conservatives who have that emergency break. They believe in big R rights granted by God, including rights granted to their liberal ideological opponents. Conservative, that's why conservatives don't do this. They have the emergency break. Radical liberals don't. Chris, if this type of behavior were being conducted against a minority liberal by a group of people uh, chanting the same type of things, um, I think the left would rightly be quite upset and probably would hold all sorts of vigils and demand community, you know, meetings and prayer groups and so forth. But the Democrats, they kind of act like they just want this to go away, whereas I think we need well, more of a broad-based condemnation of this group. I, I don't support this kind of protesting. I want to be very clear. I, I think protesting is important. And I think it should happen. I think there's a time and a place for it. Going to where people are eating breakfast, I don't think that's the time or the place. That said, I was very dubious on this protest. I don't know how these people found uh, right. Charlie Kirk and, and Miss Owens, Candace Owens, in Philadelphia. I'm suspicious of this, whether or not this is real or not. I'm not saying I know for sure. I don't. But it's kind of weird to me. They're not exactly, look, Laura, you're a much bigger star. You could go out to breakfast and nobody's protesting you. Uh, and so I'm a little, like, dubious on this whole thing. But this kind of protest shouldn't happen. Uh, uh, you know, we also shouldn't have a president who's out there calling the, the media the enemy of the people. That is a real, a real problem in America. And I think that everything's got to calm down. We've got a debate like we're doing right here, right now. Dan and I disagree on just about anything. But I love Dan, and I enjoy debating Dan, Dan about issues uh, that affect America. And I think this that's is, the kind of discourse yeah. we need I, right now. What I think not, this not, not yelling and screaming. Yeah, I think what Dan was getting at is important. I think what this Antifa group is trying to do is intimidate people from actually being in public. I don't know how they knew these the, the guys were having breakfast. I have no idea. But it, it's, a, it's an attempt to keep people, like, shuttered in their homes. I mean, I thought everybody was supposed to come out of the closet. Now you're supposed to stay a, in your home, not be able to leave, and not be able to go in public. Or they will literally scream the most horrible words in front of your children. Doesn't matter what you're doing, because you're part of the... How is this a fascist to be speaking around the country? I don't understand how that makes you fascist. They don't know their history, Dan. How? They're doing it now to the uh, Marine Recruiting Station, yeah. which, again, does not surprise me one bit.
you saw that uh, yeah, I, event in Berkeley over the weekend. Berkeley, right. you can always count on them for pro pro freedom, right. pro liberty stuff. <laughs> well, well, so we thought. Well, a couple of things here. Uh, listen, the, on the on the enemy of the people line first from Chris. And Chris is right. I don't make it personal. Chris never have. But on the issues, the enemy of the people thing. That's not what Trump was saying. What Trump was talking about were the fake news people. And I want to be clear on this. If the fake news people want to stop being insulted and want they want to stop the CNN sucks chance, then just stop sucking. It, it's a very simple. Uh, this isn't difficult. But secondly, he mentioned uh, Chris mentioned that you know you having a profile and you being able to eat lunch. My profile, I assure you, is far smaller than yours, Laura. And I've been confronted. I'm not a victim. Let me be clear. I'm not a snowflake. I am not in any way whining about it. All right. Everybody horse blinders on here. I'm just saying I've been confronted in public many times, one time in an airport where the TSA had to ask the dude to leave the line because he recognized me from Fox News and absolutely lost his marbles. Laura, what? at no point in my, I'm not kidding. At no point oh in my, my life gosh. have I ever, he did. He, the TSA said, sir, you're going to have to get off the line if you don't calm down. And in JFK in New York, people started clapping because he was given the boot. Now, I'm just saying, I have never in my life as a conservative, and I mean this sincerely, ever thought about approaching someone I ideologically disagreed with and aggressively confronting never. them in a public space, no. ever. That is, that is morally and ethically verboten. You just don't do it. And no. why the liberals think this is okay, I don't get. <laughs> Wow. Conservatives under attack. You have Candace Owens, you're watching her there from yesterday, and Charlie Kirk. They were both ambushed because they were having breakfast in Philadelphia. That's it. Uh, Candace Owens, communications director of Turning Point USA, and Charlie Kirk, founder and president of Turning Point USA, to tell us about what happened yesterday about this time at a restaurant in city center, Philly, called Green Eggs Cafe. So you're, you're there because you're going to have a meeting together to talk to your graphics team and, and whatnot, and, and you live in Philly. And then one of you realized, hey, look over there. Somebody's wearing Antifa gear. Mm -hmm. that's that's, right. Yeah, that's exactly right. And so we, we kind of progressed through breakfast, having fun, you know, just going through, you know, Turning Point USA related, you know, business items. And then we look out the window about 30 minutes later and a, a mob starts to form. So the people inside had alerted people outside, they're in here. Yeah, yeah. They sent out some sort of a bat signal, which said that we have found the conservatives come and harass them. And that's exactly what they did. They descended very quickly. They mobilized. It lets us know that this is, this is a well-funded effort. Um, this was at 8 a.m. Monday morning, which means it's likely that this is their job. Um, and it was quite terrifying how quickly they were able to assemble that group. And they blew a whistle, didn't they? That's right. They were blowing whistles, bullhorns. Bull this close to my face and my Look ear. And uh, th this, like, I mean, it, it felt to me reminiscent of the civil rights era because the entire police force is black. There was only one white police officer. The entire Antifa group is white. And they were screaming at us, calling us race traitors, telling the police officers that they were racist, all and black and Hispanic. And you were a white supremacist? And I was a white supremacist. And they said, you're a race traitor. Whose race are we betraying? White liberals? Is that who we've betrayed because we don't think like them, because we refuse to subscribe to political orthodoxy? Right. Were you nervous? Did you, did you fear for your safety? Well, look, we were shocked. And, you know, Candace and I, I turned to Candace. I said, look, let's stand our ground for a couple minutes here and just kind of see what this is all about. And the police had an unbelievable job. And we really have to, I mean, what they go through and the harassment. Here's these, you know, these protesters, and that's probably a generous word to describe them, harassing them, the police nonstop. And we just kind of stood there. Next thing I know, I'm having water thrown at me, eggs thrown at me. We did not retaliate. We never will. Um, that's not the right way to handle situations right. like this. And look, we don't want to play the victim card. That's a very important thing. But we do want to warn the American people that this is the new face of the Democrat Party. And Candace, you actually were yelling. You were yelling, we yeah, love the police. I love the police which because is, it, it, was, it was jarring to me to see this, the illustration of black men standing peacefully. These police officers were black, and they were standing peacefully, silently, as they were being shouted at by white liberals. So it really, I, I felt a, a, like a necessity to defend them and say, we love you guys, we love the police, right. thank you for protecting they, us. They don't love the police, but you know what? They might have been following orders. A go sign was given directly and loudly by Maxine Waters a few weeks ago. Right. Remember this. You see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant 
in a department store at a gasoline station. You get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome. That you were and she, they're doing what she said, am I right? They're following so, orders. Exactly what she said. And, and, not and look, they want us to apologize or back away from our support of the president. They are so frustrated that this president is succeeding. Right. And they cannot reconcile with the fact that he's going to be the greatest president in modern American history and that the economy is booming. And you see them losing mm -hmm. their mind and they're resorting to these mob thuggish tactics. Let me ask you something. What would, what would the news coverage be like today if a couple of uh, people in Trump hats, Make America Great Again hats, were hooting, uh, yelling at uh, people inside a restaurant, drove them out, and then dumped water on them. Black head. people. Imagine if people in Trump hats were yelling at a young black woman, screaming at her yes. because of her political affiliation. Imagine what the stories would be. It would be wall-to-wall -wall coverage, and we would never hear the end of it. But somehow it's okay. And the argument that we're hearing is that it's not illegal to discriminate based off of political affiliation. Do you guys actually need a, pol a piece of legislation to tell you that this is wrong? To tell you that harassing people based on who they support politically is wrong? Then that that's where we're at in this country. We have to start considering rights for mm -hmm. conservative thinkers. But the thing is, look at Kristen, uh, Kirsten Nielsen having mm -hmm. dinner. Look at Cara, uh, Sarah Huckabee, Sarah Huckabee, Sarah Sanders. Huckabee Sanders having dinner. Stephen Miller, they're outside protesting at his apartment. Mm -hmm. This is getting closer and closer to going really bad. Steve Scully's still recovering from injuries after being shot because he happened to be playing second base practicing for uh, on his Republican softball team. And, and Rand Paul was mauled by his neighbor, you know, political hate crime, uh, one after the other. And we as conservatives, we reject the victim status. Instead, let's be victors and show up in huge force in November and not allow these radicals to regain control of Congress. Because where are the Democrats denouncing this? Silence. Well, I wonder, how did they know y'all were in that restaurant? And what, how did they get such a big group so quickly. They had four people that were eating tables down for us with Antifa decals on their bag that recognized us instantly. We thought, okay, they recognize us, no big deal. We didn't think they were gonna send out a signal to tell people to come harass right. us. And I do right. wanna say this, it doesn't matter what they do if they harass us in the streets. This is not going to change the effects of this administration. I've said this before many times on this couch. We saw the Rasmussen poll this uh, last week. Black support, support for Donald Trump has doubled uh, since this time last year. And the right. reason is because people are starting to recognize the left, the Democrats, they are the party of hate. And there's something about you articulating your message as a young African-American woman that really scares the left. I've been tremendously effective. I've been showing the truth. I've been telling the truth. I've been telling them about real black history and showing that it was never the Republicans that were racist in this country. It was always the Democrats. The Democrats were behind the terrorism and the KKK. The Democrats are behind Antifa and the terrorism that is happening. Today. It's a real shame quick. that y'all can't have breakfast yeah. in peace. So y'all stay safe. Have you, you thought about security now? Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. something we're obviously looking very close at. And it's a sad day in America that two 20-somethings can eat quietly at a cafe and we're harassed for our support of the president and conservative values. But we're not going to back down. We're just getting started. Can't have a plate of eggs and toast. That is a ser searing indictment of the political atmosphere right now. Charlie and Candace, thank you very much thank for joining you. us. Thank you. Telling thank us your you story. Guys.